Okay, we are going to be doing three different videos on slavery, part one and part two together, and then um, later on part three. So this is the thesis, as Americans justified their use of slaves. And just to make a very important note, it doesn't mean that they're saying that it actually is okay, that, that we are saying this is okay. Americans are justifying making it okay in their own heads. Um, slaves rebelled by coping and cope by rebelling. So the first two videos will be on this um, first part of the sentence, the first part of the thesis, how Americans made slavery okay in their own heads. And then the third video, which is a lot easier uh, material, is how slaves rebel by coping and cope by rebelling. So what we're going to be doing is, um, first off, I'm talking about how beginning in the American Revolution, um, we really thought that slavery would die on its own, but obviously it didn't, um, not until the Civil War. So it holds on, and how did it hold on? And now that slavery is de Southerners depend on slavery, how do they justify it in their own minds? We'll be talking about three different ways that they justified it. And then the second video is on um, slave women, so the enslaved women. So how did Southerners justify their abuse of slave women in their own minds? Again, it's very, very difficult material. And then why do so many more men than women escape? And then the third um, video is how did slaves cope and how did the cult of domesticity in the North encourage abolitionism? So we've talked about the cult of domesticity. Abolitionism is um, stopping um, slavery. So that whole movement with women, we'll be talking about that, um, how it um, definitely was a big part of abolitionism. Okay, so we did believe slavery would die on its own. Um, so I'll read you this and we'll talk about it. Um, so Pennsylvania is um, populated by Quakers, and Quakers believed that God was in each one of us. So they were leaders with um, stopping slavery and women's rights. So what they said is in 1718, they said kids born in that year and onwards will be free at age 28. So does that mean everybody is free at the same time? No, it's what's called gradual emancipation. Most, most people believed in gradual emancipation. So let's keep on going down, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what that is. So in 1783, Massachusetts, um, slavery was outlawed. Remember, they didn't have very many slaves, maybe 1%, um, 3% of the population. You know, still horrible, right, because they're supposed to be these Puritans, right? Um, but they did, you know, think, hey, we're talking about the, you know, all people are created equal, and yet we have slaves. This isn't right. Um, Vermont and New Hampshire follow with outlawing slavery. Rhode Island, Connecticut follow with gradual emancipation. Remember, these are all in the north. So why don't we immediately emancipate or free? Well, the argument was that it would be really hard on the economy. Um, also, it would be hard to deal with all of these newly freed um, slaves. Of course, the enslaved would be fine with being freed at any moment. But um, that was the argument that only really radicals believed in immediate emancipation. But again, we did believe slavery would die on its own if people slowly, slowly started just um, making things illegal. But as we know, it did not end until the Civil War. So part of that reason is that it's in the Constitution. It's in the Constitution in a number of ways. So um, first thing is the Three-Fifths Compromise. And you probably have heard of this. This is actually in the Constitution. So please know with the Constitution, we're trying to um, make two sides happy, the South and the North. So the North didn't want slavery, and the South wanted slavery. So um, if somebody has 500 slaves down in you know Georgia, <coughs> Uh, the person, the slave owner, would want all 500 of his or her slaves to count for population. Um, and so they wouldn't, the slaves wouldn't be able to vote, but when everybody's counting population and figuring out how many representatives they get in Congress, they would want all 500. Well, the North would want zero, right? They don't want the South to have more power. So they said, let's make every slave worth three-fifths of a person. So again, the continued dehumanization, right? Okay, also in the Constitution is the rights of property, right? We have the right to, you know, liberty and happiness and the right of property. Um, another compromise is they said, hey, we have the slave trade, but we will vote against it in 20 years in 1808. And we also had something in the Constitution where it says that free states must return runaway slaves. Most people didn't follow that. That's not going to happen until, like, the Civil War. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Okay, so another reason um, why slavery held on was because of the cotton gin. And unfortunately for um, the enslaved, the cotton gin made um, cotton picking extremely profitable. So after this invention, cotton production went from 750 tons per year to 1 million tons per year in the United States, which was five six of the world's total. So what ended up happening is this invention that was supposed to help the enslaved and make their jobs easier, um, created by Eli Whitney, right? It ends up increasing slavery. So um, slave slave states start proceeding west, and even Arizona becomes a slave state. So they're moving. I think it's one million slaves per um, one million slaves were moved um, to to other states, and slavery is increasing. Okay, the next thing is Missouri Compromise, and um, as we know, slavery is made legal in the South and not legal in the North. So the Missouri Compromise said. Every time we get a free state, we need to add a slave state. So when Maine was added as a free state, Missouri was added in as a slave state. And because of the Missouri Compromise and because we were extending our country more and more, by 1845, we have 15 new slave states. So um, slavery is definitely not dying out. Okay, now it's something else you need to know about, <coughs> excuse me, is the Middle Passage. And um, this is a triangle trade. This is called the triangle trade. You guys kind of see the triangle. So North America is sending raw materials to Europe. Europe is trading goods down to Africa. And Africa is sending slaves. Of course, a lot of white people were helping those, those slaves, you know, come over to South America, North America. Believe it or not, um, we in, in the United States actually received um, very few slaves compared to how many went in the Caribbean, how many went into Brazil. They had thousands of slaves. Um, their death rate was very um, low that ever, I mean, meaning the age was very low. They died at an average of 23 years old because the work was so horribly harsh. But in North America, we'll talk about that. They were able to reproduce. Um, people lived a lot longer. But um, anyways, this is the, you can see the bottom part of the triangle is called the Middle Passage. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at a couple of documents, and I'm going to go through a couple of the um, paragraphs with you, and then I'm going to ask you to um, comment on um, some of these. So this is slave trade documents, and this, please keep in mind, is in Africa. So those sold by the blacks, for the most part, prisoners of war, taken either in fight, pursuit. So the question is, who were the slaves? So that'll be one of your questions that um, you'll look at. You'll have the, the document, though. So in Africa, um, the, the kings, and we'll talk about this, other people, they were all Africans, sold their own countrymen or their other tribes um, to the whites. The whites could not go into the interior of Africa. They would die because the, the diseases that were there, they, they needed to wait till quinine in the middle 1800s. Um, but once the um, Africans got to the coast, then the whites were right there ready to, to buy them. So here we go. Here's another one about how people became enslaved. So take a look at that. All right. And um, here's another one about how they became enslaved. Now, please keep in mind in Africa, slavery is not a permanent status. Once they get to America, as we know, um, I mean, there were slaves that were freed, absolutely. But their status as a slave is property. But here it's an impermanent status. They could sell themselves into slavery, sell their family, sell their subjects into slavery. And then the people could buy themselves back out and even maybe become um, slave owners themselves. Okay, now um, this is, I need to talk to you about a paper that you're going to be doing later on. It's called the analytical paper. And a lot of people like to write about slavery. And what you do is you choose a number of sources. It depends on the class. I'm doing this for a few different classes, so I won't say the exact number. Look at your directions. Um, but I really ask that the paper not be about how people are treated badly. That doesn't take a lot of critical thinking. That's more just listing stuff. So the critical thinking questions you can ask about slavery are, um, for example, how was it justified in the minds of the slave owners or these people? So here we go. Um, this is how it's justified. They're saying that these slaves can become Christians and that we're saving their souls. Okay. Now, um, regarding, and then we'll go into the other option you can do for slavery if you want. Regarding document one, slave trade documents, please answer three of the questions in the document. Like we said, who were the slaves? Who were the slaves? Please include the question in your answer. 
Okay, now another slave document is Alexander Falconbridge. He's very interesting because he worked aboard slave ships, supposedly to help the slaves, right? But then he later on became governor of a British colony for freed slaves in Sierra Leone. Um, the United States had another um, colony for freed slaves called Liberia. Um, but anyways, this is his account. So um, what I want you to look at is what did the author do to make sure the slaves stayed alive on board the ship? So what you could also do with this, like we we're talking about the analytical paper, is you could talk about what did slaves do to fight back. I think that's much more interesting than just how were they treated badly, right? Because you have to think about, you know, people don't just want to be victims, right? They're going to fight for their lives. And that's exactly what these people are doing. It's kind of different, though. They are actually fighting for the choice to die. Um, so they are saying, we're not going to eat. And um, what this author is saying is that they broke people's mouths in order to eat. Um, so you can answer the question for the, for the assignment, but then also for the paper, if you want to, you could talk about how they fought back. Okay, here's another one about fighting back, which again is very difficult, or you can use this paragraph for justification. You need to answer it for the assignment, but then again, you can use it for one of those two choices. For those choices, by the way, I would never do both. Um, for a paper, it gets really confusing. There's just not very much. Um, it just needs to be one focus. Um, but anyways, okay, so regarding document two, you can look in the document. Please answer three of the questions in the document, okay? All right. So um, here is a picture of some Africans being transported in Africa. And this is a picture of an abolitionist ship. So, um, an, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the slave ship drawn by an abolitionist. So the abolitionist person against slavery is trying to show how inhumane the slaves were put into the slave ship. These are the shackles. Okay, so now that Southerners depend on slavery, how do they justify it in their own minds? How do they say uh, legitimize is another word you can use? So this is a picture of a supposed slave cabin. You can see everybody is dancing and so happy, right? And look how cute that cabin is, right? I mean, yeah, so I don't know if that's really that accurate, right? Um, so there was a fictional account written by a man named John Pendleton Kennedy and he's talking about this kind and considerate master. Now, people are people, so there's all kinds of masters, all kinds of whatever, but this document was written to prove that slave owners treated their slaves really well, okay? So it's called paternalism, and this would be one of the justifications. So paternalism is saying we are the father figure of the slaves. We take care of them like they're our children. Okay, the problem with this kind of argument, though, is that none of us would entrust our entire economic well-being to, like, three- and four-year-olds, right? So it's ridiculous. They don't really treat the enslaved like children. They expect them to make all their money for them, right? But the justification is, oh, they're like children, right? Okay, so slavery has exists in America, right? Here they are dancing and so happy, right? And again, you know, this again is a justification, but a second justification is, look how this is in England, right? These are factory workers. And they call these factory workers wage slaves. So these are men that are going to receive a wage, but supposedly they're slaves. And that word was used to say, um, well, you'll see this in Orestes Brownson, um, why was slavery better than free labor? So um, now please know Orestes Brownson was not a, you know, he didn't like, preach yay slavery, but he did use it in pretty disgusting ways. So who did the author think had the advantage? What could be thought of as an advantage? Ridiculous as the question is. Okay, again, please know I am not justifying slavery. I am telling you how these people thought at this time, okay, and what they argued um, to say that, that, you know, so that they could live with themselves, basically. Okay, so um, superior to wage slaves, that slavery is supposedly superior to wage slaves or factory work. Because remember, there's a lot of uh, industrialization going on in the North and in England. Okay, so um, please give one example from the text. How is slavery justified here? Okay, this is a really, really difficult one. And this is um, based on what's called scientific racism. So please know that during this time, Charles Darwin, um, with the survival of the fittest and evolution, is happening. So they have this kind of a um, slide. And this um, man named Dr. Samuel Cartwright, um, he came up with all these Greek letters, Greek words, saying 
again, justification, making slavery okay in his own mind, in many minds. So dropatomania is from a runaway slave, matter, cra matter crazy. So supposedly if they want to run away, it's because they have a disease. And um, they have another thing that they're supposedly submissive knee benders. In other words, that they're naturally um, submissive. So um, take a look at that. That's another um, question. And is those Dysthesia Ethiopica. So um, he's again, you know, using all these Greek terms to um, justify Greek or Latin. I don't know. Maybe it's Latin. Um, okay. So scientific racism even went so far as to propose two separate creations. All right. So regarding document five, give two examples. How is slavery justified here? Okay, so that's the end of this um, first video. Again, it is very, very difficult, I know. Please know it says Americans justify the use of slaves. But they did, it's not that they are making it okay, but they're saying, how can we live with ourselves, right? How can we um, say that slavery is a good thing, right? Um, which, again, we do not agree with at all, right? So um, the next video is going to be on women. It's going to also be extremely disturbing. I really need you to talk to me. If you're having any problems, please don't just feel like, you know, hey, um, this was offensive or whatever. Just you need to talk to me, okay? Because I, I can't, I don't know what you're all thinking. But hopefully I've um, ex explained a very, very difficult topic. And hopefully you, you'll understand, um, you know, what I'm trying to do. Thank you.